Dang it. Damn it. Actually, I got him. He was so small, I didn't know you was there. I got another one. Yep, they're coming out to play. Oh, shit. Little chip. Gio, baby, Gio. About time at the buzzer. Nice one. Big Daddy. You know it's big when it's almost the same size as the cooler. All right, fellas, uh, I'm gonna try to do a little quick video on uh, what I was using and going over exactly what happened. So uh, I almost didn't do this video because you know it wasn't that great of a day and it didn't it didn't go as as I wanted to. Uh, but then I thought about it and you know I'm a realist and. You know, you're, you're not going to go out there every day and, and, and get on fish and tear them up and catch your limits. And I mean, the reality of it is it's fishing. It's not catching. And, you know, I've got a lot of a lot of friends of mine that are guides and they'll tell you the same thing, you know, and I understand the pressure they're under sometimes, uh, you know, taking people out that have paid for a trip and trying to put them on some fish and you can't get them on some fish you know i mean it, that's just the luck of the draw sometimes you, you're not going to find them uh this day started off bad uh towards the evening time the water finally cleared up and uh the evening bite turned on uh once we got on a, a low tide uh but yeah uh towards the end i started catching a few uh i mean they were small none of them were were, were keepers but then at the very last minute, right at the buzzer, I caught a real nice one. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was right around 21 inches. Uh, 
you know, definitely not my, my, my personal best, but but it is what it is. I mean, overall, it's still a great flounder. Um, so with that being said, uh, I mean, to all those guys out there, you know, I know everybody's got that friend that, oh, man, I catch my limit every time I go out and, you know, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm going to call BS on that one. Uh, all the true fishermen know that you're going to have some days where you got to grind it out. You're going to have some days where you get skunked. And you're going to have some days when you when you kill them. You know what I mean? Well, this wasn't one of those days when I killed them, but it was still it was still a good day overall. Uh, anyways, let's get on to what I was using. Um, as far as my rod and reel combo, I was using, uh, this is a Shimano 2021 or 2021 Shimano Conquest Calcutta. And this is a, a JDM version. Um, they do offer a US version. I'll be honest with you, uh, you're better off ordering it from digitaka.com. If I'm not mistaken, I think the specs are better on this one if you order it through Japan. And not only that, but you're gonna save a hundred bucks if you order it through Digitaka versus ordering it somewhere here in the US. Uh, again, you don't have to go with this fancy of a reel. This is just personally what I use. I mean, hell, you can throw a, a Zipco 88 out there, what, whatever whatever floats your boat. Um, going on to the rod, this is a six foot eight Sarge Custom Chaos. Uh, it's one of my, my favorite rods, one of my go-to rods. Uh, the sensitivity on this thing is amazing. I mean, I can feel every bite. Uh, Sarge up church definitely uh, I'd have to say he probably builds the best rods here in Texas uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would agree with me and probably a few that don't but I'm going off of what I like um, but yeah shout out to Sarge uh, now let's go on to tackle so I was using this pack, this is a weighted swim bait hook made by Gamagatsu. This is a two odd. Now, I'll be honest with you, I prefer using a three odd, but with the whole situation right now, you know, I'm pretty sure you've been to tackle stores, everybody's out of tackle right now. Uh, I could only find a two odd. Again, I prefer using a three odd, but this one still ended up working out for me. Uh, I've got this going to 30 pound uh, leader with a loop knot. I like using a loop knot just because it gives me a little bit more presentation on my lure. And then about 16 to 18 inches up, I put a split shot on here. The reason I like using this split shot, number one, this is only a 1 8 ounce on this hook so it's gonna sink slow but I use this slip <clears throat> excuse me this uh, split shot to give me a little bit more distance in my cast and also for the current uh, depending on current conditions uh, now another thing I can tell you about this is when I'm fishing a lot of structure typically this split shot is gonna hit first on bottom and even though I run this hook weedless, and I'll show you how I run that bait in here in a minute. When this hits bottom first, whether it gets wedged in between two rocks or whatnot, it helps prevent me from getting hooked up <clears throat> on some kind of structure with this hook. And worst case scenario, it'll pull this split shot all the way down to the bottom, but it ends up working itself out. I just give it a few pops and it, it works itself out. So I end up saving a lot of tackle this way. Because I'll be honest with you, uh, these Gamagatsus, they're, they're not cheap. They run about 6 to $7 a pack. Uh, now, I will give you a little pointer here. H2O Academy brand makes one too. The only thing is it doesn't have that bait holder on there, the little spring. But you can order those or you can buy them separately. Uh, now... This is the lure that I was throwing today. This is a pearl and white chartreuse gulp. They call this a manis shrimp. 
uh, during the flounder run, this, this lure is almost impossible to find. And that's just for the ones that know, they know. I mean, this is a great lure. Great presentation in the water. Uh, let me show you exactly how I set this lure up. So on the front of this lure, right here, there's a little circle. So you're gonna take this spring and you're gonna put that little needle right in that circle. Just like that. And then you're gonna work that little spring onto this bait. Give me a second here. Once you work it on, you just give it a few twists. I usually twist mine almost all the way up. Now, then you're going to measure it out to where it's going to come out of your bait. Now, on the bottom of this bait, it's got a circle. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's got a circle right there on one of those notches where that three out hook will go it'll lead right up to that circle again this is a two out i didn't like where it ended up uh, working into this bait but it still worked out for me so you're gonna put this right in the middle of this tail it's gonna come out the back now there's your hook you can see it is it's exposed now what I do is I pinch this lure and I put it in the back of that lure and this makes it weedless now I know what you're thinking you're thinking once you try to get a hook set it's gonna miss the, the, the point of the hook not true if you look as soon as you put some little pressure on this boom and that was barely pushing on it i'm gonna tell you now a flounder's gonna bite it a lot harder than that but it's gonna expose that hook as soon as he nibbles on it and uh you're gonna get that hook set um <clears throat> i can tell you uh these aren't that durable uh you're probably gonna run through them you may want to get a few packs uh throughout the year i, I stay stocked up on them just because like i said during the run they're gonna be hard to find uh <clears throat> here's another one i didn't actually use this in this video but this is a savage gear uh 3d shrimp uh i typically use a voodoo shrimp this one is very similar um the thing that i like about this one better it has a built-in rattle and they're scented uh not to take nothing away from voodoo uh maybe they just need to step their game up a little bit I still use both, um, but needless to say, I like the built-in rattle. It gives you, you know, any little plus is good, uh, and also it's scented. Uh, I didn't, I didn't catch any on this one today, but that's when the bite was a little slow. Uh, the other day, I don't know if you saw the other video I posted, I did catch quite a few on this lure. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be it for today, fellas. Um, Hopefully some of this info can, you know, help you out. Again, I'm not, I'm not saying you, you need to use this. This is just what I use, my preference. Uh, use whatever you, you know, you feel confident in. Um, I want to give a few shout outs right here to uh, Anglers Anonymous. I picked up a lot of this stuff at Anglers Anonymous. Uh, those guys are located out in Katy, one of the best tackle shops here in the Houston area, if you ask me. Um, and shout out to a couple of guide buddies of mine, uh, Jesse Francisco, uh, Ernest Pillow, and Jeffrey Acosta. Hopefully uh, I can get out there with y'all and get on some fishing. We'll be doing some videos soon. Uh, but yeah, that's gonna be it, fellas. Uh, tight lines, and I hope y'all enjoy the video. Later. All right, guys, I got this flounder here. Uh, this is the one I caught yesterday, right at the buzzer. Um, I'm gonna show you how I fillet mine out. I'm not saying it's the best way. I'm just showing you how I do mine and uh, I'm gonna prep it up for fish tacos 
All right, guys, first thing you want to do is spray off all this slime coat, because if not, you're just going to be fumbling around trying to fillet it and it's going to keep sliding everywhere. So I just spray it off real good. See what I mean? It slides. Spray your board down. Spray the fish down real good. We should be good to go all right so typically what i'll do is i'll go up this backbone right here straight down the middle and then i'll kind of fillet in you can start this way too some people like to start this way i just started straight up the backbone And then just follow that rib cage. Cut this fin off if you want. Get it out of the way. Once you start following this rib cage, or not the rib cage, but the backbone, just get all the way down. Try to run it flush up on there as much as you can. That way you don't waste any meat. This is also the same way I do it when I'm deboning a flounder to stuff it. And you just pop it through this other side. One fillet. And come down the same way on this one. Just run it down that backbone. And as you can see, I didn't even get this fish. You don't you don't even have to, it's not necessary. Two fillets. Same thing here, come up this line. I'm not sure if y'all can see that line on camera, but there's a little visible line right there that shows you where the backbone's at. <clears throat> this one's a little trickier. It's a real thin fillet. Typically, this is the one I use for my fish tacos. Clean this off a little bit.
So when you're done, that's how it should look. You should be able to see through it. Make sure you didn't leave any meat on there. And then I'm gonna show y'all a little secret here. A lot of people don't know about this. But this is what you call an oyster. A halibut. The halibut cheeks have these and so do flounder. I used to fillet halibut too a lot. To dig in here. And this is a real good piece of meat. On the big girls, it's even better, but I'll go ahead and show you on this one just as a demonstration. But yeah, on a halibut, they're pretty big. They're about that big. And then on some of the big flounder too, you can get them. But yeah, it's just cheap meat. <clears throat> All right, let me uh, clean this off a little bit. Whoa, that's all right. We'll get that one to the neighbor. So next what I'm going to do is just skin them. I don't know if you noticed, but you don't even have to scale these when you're filleting them. No need in scaling them if you're going to skin them. Just run your knife and pull that skin like that. Pull the skin right off. Some people keep this little thin meat. I don't really mess with it. I mean, it's all right to each their own. But I don't mess with the fin meat. Sometimes if it's intact pretty good, I'll leave it on there. Just run your knife like that. Sometimes you can use a towel to grab that skin a little bit better. All right, fellas, camera heated up there for a minute. So much for that GoPro 10. But uh, this is what you end up with. Four nice fillets. And uh, this is what I'm gonna use to make my fish tacos. I'll be making that video next. All right, fellas, I'm gonna try to make this quick. Uh, just go over the ingredients. I'm not gonna cook everything in front of you. That would take too long. Uh, so, for the chipotle sauce, you're gonna use, uh, I guess, chipotle in the, in, the, in the double sauce, uh, fresh garlic, and mayo. All you do is put these three in the blender. Uh, you can add a little salt and pepper, but put it in a blender, blend it up, and that, that gets your sauce. Uh, then you're gonna go to your slaw for your fish tacos, uh, red cabbage, sliced red onion, uh, cilantro I like putting fresh uh, fresh black pepper sea salt and a little bit of apple cider vinegar that's like your little salad dressing right there for your slaw 
then you're gonna go on to your beer batter. Uh, you can use whatever beer you want. I use Corona. Um, <clears throat> mix that in a bowl, make your beer better. Then uh, you got your fish right here. I, I'm gonna slice this up into thin strips and then put it in the batter and fry them. And then uh, I use these tortillas right here. Uh, they're like a half and half mix of flour and uh, corn. Uh, of course, typically I like using the fresh tortillas, but you know, my vieja just got off work today. She didn't really feel like making fresh tortillas, so I had to get the store bought. But that's everything you need right there. All right, folks. So you want to cook these until they look like that, golden brown. And then one last important thing. Always, always heat up your tortillas, man. Ain't nothing worse than trying to eat a taco in a cold ass tortilla. Don't nobody want that, man. Gotta be a hot tortilla, fresh out the comal. It's the only way to do it. All right, folks, that's the finished product. Texas Fresh Gold Flounder Fish Tacos with Chipotle Mayo. And a nice cold Corona. Uh, again, don't forget to heat up your tortillas, man. I see a lot of people make that mistake that they serve tacos in a cold tortilla. Uh, Hopefully I like the video and hopefully I'll try the recipe and let me know, leave, you know, some comments in there and tell me what you think about it. Y'all have a good one.